Where's your daughter so we can check on her to make sure that she's okay? We announced that we had concluded that five-year-old Harmony was murdered in Manchester in early December of 2019. Why is it you have so much trouble talking about Harmony? Because I, just, I got nothing else to say. Specifically, Mr. Montgomery has been charged with the following four crimes. Second-degree murder. Adam Montgomery is gearing up for his murder trial, but now he wants certain pieces of evidence banned. So how might this impact justice for Harmony? And Gypsy Rose Blanchard released from prison after spending eight years behind bars for her mother's murder. So now what's next for Gypsy? And Paula Abdul filing a lawsuit accusing a former American Idol producer of sexual assault. It's all coming up next for you right here on Opening Statements. Good Tuesday morning to you and welcome to Opening Statements. Also, Happy New Year. I'm your host, Julie Grant. I've missed you over the holidays and we have a great show planned for you today. If you're new to the program, first of all, welcome. We're glad to have you here. And I think you'll find the show is a lot like the actual opening statements at trial, right? That's your first impression with the jury to tell the story, get them all primed and ready to hear the case evidence. Well, that's what we do here on this show today on Court TV. We get you ready for all the major cases that are at trial and all of the big headlines in the world of true crime. So right now, it's time for you to grab a cup of coffee. It's time for my opening statement. Sometimes the cover-up is worse than the crime. We've all heard that expression, right? And we know that's often how criminals get caught. And I'll tell you what, now that we're in 2024, my friends, there is one criminal that I can't wait to see face the music soon for the murder of his daughter, Harmony Montgomery. That precious baby angel was murdered five years ago, and she was only five years old at the time. And everyone who loved Harmony can't even grieve her death properly because her little body is nowhere to be found. Perhaps that's because she was beaten to death and her little lifeless body was then destroyed. That's what police and prosecutors believe happened to Harmony Montgomery. As if the aggravated assault and the homicide weren't enough, police believe that her corpse was abused, abused to the point of being destroyed. Now, how might that have happened? I think we have some very strong hints at how in the recent motion filed by Harmony's father's legal team to exclude from case evidence what Adam Montgomery bought at a Home Depot store. Like 40 pound bag of pelletized limestone, a metal cutting diamond blade, a fuel grinder, and a lithium ion battery and charger. This guy was living in his car. Why in the world would he need those things? Maybe the cover-up was worse than the crime. Adam Montgomery, Judgment Day is coming soon for you. February 6th, that is when justice for precious harmony begins. Because that's when Adam Montgomery's murder trial begins. Little Harmony Montgomery deserved to live. And whoever killed her? deserves to pay the price. Adam Montgomery, if it was you, if those items you bought were to cover up your daughter's death, may you get the justice that's coming to you. That's my opening statement on this Tuesday morning. Let me know if you like it right now. It's time for what's on your daily docket. So what they got you for, man? Uh, oh, man. Biggest case in uh, Las Vegas history. Oh yeah? Yeah. Like recent? Uh -huh. September 7, 1996. All right, friends, here's a look at some of the cases we're following for you today on Court TV. In Nevada, Dwayne Keefe D. Davis is due in court at noon today, where he'll be asking a judge to release him on bail pending his trial for the murder of beloved rapper Tupac Shakur. In Florida, we've got a status conference set for 9 a.m. Eastern for Patricia Ripley. She's the mom who's accused of pushing her autistic son into a canal in order to drown him. And in Utah, 
Defendant Jonathan Dunn has a preliminary hearing starting at 9 a.m. after being accused of murdering a two-year-old boy and injuring his twin sister while babysitting. For more on this hearing this morning with Patricia Ripley, let's bring in Court TV legal correspondent Kelly Kraft. She's standing by in the studio with the latest. Kelly, good morning. Good morning to you, Julie. Patricia Ripley, 47 years old. She faces charges of first-degree murder as well as attempted murder. In the May 2020 killing of nine-year-old son Alejandro, he had autism and he also was nonverbal. The Miami Herald took video of her first appearance before a judge. You're here, Ms. Ripley, because you were charged with a uh, count of uh, first-degree murder and a second count of attempted uh, premeditated first-degree murder. Police say Ripley first tried to drown her son Alejandro at about 7.30 p.m. on May 21st, 2020 in a Miami canal. During the investigation, police discovered the attempt was caught on a home surveillance camera. In the video, obtained exclusively by Univision, Patricia is holding Alejandro's hand, leading him alongside the canal. They walk back and forth, and then they stop. Seconds later, she seems to pull him closer to the water and then seems to push him in, turning and running away. About 20 seconds later, she and another man, they then appear on screen. He's a nearby resident who heard someone screaming. He gets in the water, pulls Alejandro out, saving his life. But hours later, Ripley reported her son missing, alleging he had been kidnapped. She told police two black men had ambushed her car, robbed her, and taken Alejandro. Investigators say the truth is, an hour after the first attempt, Ripley drowned Alejandro in another canal. Police found his body the following day. WTVJ was there when officials announced Ripley's arrest. The death of a child is tragic. The killing of a child is horrific. Our community is shocked by the killing of nine-year-old Alejandre Ripley and the story surrounding his crime. According to an arrest report, after Ripley was interrogated for hours, she changed her story, saying that she led Alejandro to the canal and that, quote, he's going to be in a better place if convicted Ripley could face the death penalty. Julie? Oh, my goodness. What a, what a horrific story. Uh, Kelly, thank you so much for that. So today we're going to have that hearing, and I know you'll be covering it for us. Thank you very much. Today is also expected to be a major day in the case against Jeffrey Epstein, right? Many feel that justice was never had, right, because of Epstein's death. And we know that Ghislaine Maxwell, his associate, his girlfriend, his madam, was convicted of trafficking all those young girls. But many have felt that others could have faced justice as well, associates of Jeffrey Epstein's. And finally today, perhaps we're going to get to see the list of names. I want to turn to Court TV crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson, who's been following this one for a long time. Good morning to you, my friend. Good morning to you and Happy New Year. Yeah, a long time in the waiting. This has been more than nine years in the making. The list of nearly 150 to 200 names connected to Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell could be released as early as today. This after the deadline for objections to releasing the list expired overnight. The identities of dozens of associates connected to the sex trafficking conspiracy could be exposed. The documents stemming from a lawsuit nine years ago when alleged victim, trafficking victim, Virginia Jufre filed a defamation claim against Maxwell. She produced a list of names in deposition and has also settled a civil suit against British Prince Andrew outside of court. What do you make of Prince Andrew's denials? Can you comment on that? You said you won't be silenced. Um, he has been out, outspoken. He knows what he's done, up. and he can attest to that. So. Can you repeat that? We can't hear you. Step up. He knows exactly what he's done, and um, I hope he comes clean about it. Prince Andrew has denied any wrongdoing. The list of names expected to be released include associates, co-conspirators, former employees, alleged perpetrators, and alleged victims. Epstein, as you know, died by suicide before going to trial. Maxwell was convicted, serving a 20-year sentence. She has appealed that verdict. She's hoping um, to serve lesser time. But after this, you know, maybe new charges? For some Ooh, people, we don't know. Right, Matt. I know that's one of the big questions you just raised. You're right. Could there be more charges, civil lawsuits? Right. I mean, this and is... for who? Right. 
Uh, this is just going to have a world of possibilities depending on who is named, what they allegedly did, what they knew, if there was any co-cons, you know, uh, conspirator type plans that may have gone on. We know that, you know, Gillian Maxwell was conspiring with Jeffrey Epstein to traffic these children. Was anybody else part of that? That's what I want to know in any of these right. instances. And then she's also kind of viewed as the madam in the whole situation of yeah. providing um, an avenue for these girls to interact with these men and kind of facilitating that. So so I'm sure that we'll hear a lot more about that and some of the men that were in their presence. Whether or not they're guilty of a crime, that's to be determined at a later point. Mm -hmm. Right, Matt, you're right. And even just standing by and doing nothing, you know that children, I mean, come True. on, we all have to, as you know, my friend, you know, protect our children in America. Uh, right. Just sickening. Well, we're going to be waiting for that one. I know you're all over it. Of Thank course. you. Matt Johnson, Court TV Crime and Justice Correspondent. We'll see you in our Tipping the Skills segment. I need to ask you about Adam Montgomery in that one. Thank you so much. Right now, I want to bring in my guest. He is an attorney. He's also the creator of the Jury Trial Mentor YouTube channel, Carl Steinbeck. Carl, good morning to you. Happy New Year. Thanks for coming on the program this morning. Uh, let's talk about what we might see in this document when it's unsealed, these names. Uh, tell me what you're expecting and why, please. Well, I think you're going to see names that were uh, affiliated in, in some form or fashion with Jeffrey Epstein. And, of course, he had these flights that were going many times to this uh, island of his and uh it's also known as Pedo Island for short because that's supposedly where a lot of these girls were uh, trafficked and uh, abused. And so having your name associated in any way, shape or form with Jeffrey Epstein is really a badge of shame and dishonor. And so that's why I think that there's been such a uh, resistance uh, from folks that do have names listed to uh, have their attorneys be fighting this. But the federal judge finally decided there's not a good reason in the public interest to withhold these names. So. I do think that uh, this is uh, a good thing for the interest of justice, and I think these people have to explain themselves. Mm -hmm. Definitely, Carl. I would have to think that anybody who has some involvement had to have been very worried the last couple of weeks because it wasn't like the court just said, oh, we're going to release the names today. No, they, they had to do the redactions and those documents and uh, kind of put everybody on pins and needles. I, I would imagine there probably were some people who weren't enjoying the holidays very much. What do you think? Right, totally. Because how, how, how do you explain yourself? And even if you don't, no matter what you say, you're not going to be coming across in a good light. And I think a lot of relationships could be uh, having some difficulties in the coming days, weeks, months and years as well. Definitely. Uh, yeah, this is uh, about to open up a whole nother can of worms. Uh, I can't wait for it. You'll see it here on Court TV and when we learn those names. Carl Steinbeck, so glad you're on the show. Stand by, please. Here's what's coming up next on Opening Statements. Hey, everyone. This is Gypsy. I'm finally free. Um, I just want to send a quick video to thank everyone for the massive amount of support that I've been getting on social media. Gypsy Rose Blanchard released from prison after serving eight years for her mother's murder. So now that she's free, what's next for Gypsy? Plus, Paula Abdul filing a lawsuit claiming sexual assault, and we're breaking down her allegations against Nigel Lithgow. So glad to have you back with us. Now for what is trending in true crime. A Missouri woman who was convicted of convincing her boyfriend to murder her own mother was released last week from prison. You may be familiar with her case. It's the case of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, and it sparked national tabloid interest after reports emerged that her mother, Dee Dee, was forcing her to pretend for years that she was suffering from several illnesses. Turns out Gypsy was never sick, and she said that it wasn't until after her arrest that she realized how healthy she actually was. Her mother, Dee Dee, apparently had Munchausen syndrome by proxy. And now Gypsy Rose is free and taking to social media. I've got a lot of great things happening really soon. I've got my documentary series coming out, The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Um, I just put out an ebook that I'm super proud of. Um, it's not a rehashing of everything that happened. It's more of my reflection of everything that I have learned um, and experienced in the last eight and a half years. So my ebook is called Release Conversations on the Eve of Freedom, which you can pre-order now. 
Um, and again, just thank you guys for all the support and uh, keep watching. Our question this morning, after serving 85% of her 10-year sentence, what's next for Gypsy Rose Blanchard? I've got my power panel with me this morning, still with me, prosecuting attorney, formerly Carl Steinbeck, and law enforcement expert Sonny Slaughter, and jury consultant and human behavior expert Susan Constantine. Wonderful to have you all on the program. All right, uh, Sonny Slaughter, would you start us off, please? What do you think is next for Gypsy Rose? Good morning, Julie. Happy New Year to you and our co-guests. I think that she is going to take advantage of this opportunity to really explain what happened to her and the process and everything that she went through while she was incarcerated. Hopefully she got the mental health services and support that she needed. And this is going to probably be a thriving um, more than a surviving opportunity for her. I think she's been through a lot. So this is um, mm -hmm. good news that she's out. Definitely, Sunny. She looks great, doesn't she? Susan, mm -hmm. let me go to you on that point. As you study her and her movements in the video, what are you thinking, please? You know, it's interesting that you said that because as you, at, you were, we were just talking about, I'm looking at and seeing this person who has a new lease on life, right? She's bright, she's sunny, she's smiling. It's all authentic. And so I can see a huge difference when you look at when she was in trial versus right now. She has been released from all this burden that she's been carrying for so long, and I hope she uses it for good and finds her new purpose in life. Definitely, Susan. Carl Steinbeck, last but certainly not least, let me tap into your experience in serving as a prosecuting attorney. When we think about the agreement that was fashioned for her, very different than uh, what happened with her boyfriend, who she conspired with at the time to kill her mother, he got life. But prosecutors said, we understand the situation with you, Gypsy Rose, essentially, and what your mother did to you. We're going for 10 years, and it was a plea agreement. Um, Carl, what do you think about the nature of that agreement? Was 10 appropriate, in your opinion? Why or why not, please? I think it was much more appropriate than having a life without sentence. She, she was physically and mentally abused by her own mother for not just days or weeks, but she, it was, this was ongoing for a number of years. And I don't know for sure if she had uh, any medications as well that induced this, these illnesses. But the, uh, the thing is, this is a, a proper temperament of justice. The prosecutor did the right thing by not going after her for life. And she does need to have the opportunity to get on with her life after having this, uh, having to endure this horrible childhood. Mm -hmm. it definitely. You know, it's, it's so sad uh, when you think about how many years were lost uh, because of the way that her mother treated her. So she was victimized. And, uh, you know, to mm -hmm. your point, Carl, it's, it is appropriate so that she can, you know, of course, be penalized and punished for the wrong, you know, but it is appropriate in light of the facts and in light of what happened to her. Uh, Sunny Slaughter, tell me, in terms of what Gypsy Rose maybe needs to do in terms of taking care of her mental health, uh, what thoughts do you have, please, on what uh, she can do to continue on this good path? Um, victim services, law enforcement has, um, and the prosecutor's office and um, other agencies, they have victim services uh, entities and organizations that they work with. So hopefully they have surrounded her with these services and support. And she needs to take this as an ongoing effort to ensure because healing is not a one-time process. I mean, one-time thing, it is an ongoing process. So she needs to continue to do that and also to reacclimate herself back into society. So hopefully the um, prosecutor's office and victim services uh, for the state is providing her the support and services necessary to ensure that she stays on track because she still is on probation. Right, right, Sunny, and that's a good thing for her, definitely. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there's an order from the court, I would assume, where she needs to undergo a mental health evaluation, comply with any mm -hmm. recommended treatment, and continue that uh, by way of the supervision of her probation department. Hopefully it will happen for her. We gotta switch gears now to another big trending topic in San Antonio. Have you heard about this? The bodies of pregnant teenager Savannah Soto and her boyfriend Matthew Garrup were found shot to death in a parked vehicle last week. Now police have released this surveillance video. Take a look at this. They're saying that they're searching for two persons of interest in these murders. In the video, you can see the couple's Kia, the Kia Optima, it slowly approaches that pickup truck there, briefly interacts with the driver. Somebody gets out of the Kia, but it's unclear where they go. 
the Kia then leaves the scene. Now, SAPD is investigating this case as a capital murder. Here's our question. Should the perpetrators in the case face the death penalty? Let's bring back in our power panel, Carl Steinbeck, Sonny Slaughter, and Susan Constantine. Carl, would you start us off? Uh, your thoughts on this, please. Well, you have not just the murder of one person, which in and of itself is enough for a <clears throat> capital murder, but you have a murder of two adults plus a child in the womb, which is considered a person under Texas law. So I, I would think that this is most appropriate. And uh, I think this evidence with the truck will lead them to the eventual killers. I hope you're right, Carl. I, I really do. A lot of people on pins and needles there. Uh, Susan Constantine, let me go to you next, please. Your thoughts on whether we'll see this become a capital case. Well, they certainly did this uh, crime, this felony in the wrong state, right, Texas? Mm -hmm. They've got a direct line right to the death penalty. So when you've got three people, just as my other colleague was talking about, especially with a, an unborn infant, you know, under 10 years old, I mean, it, the, the law is clear. If there was a felony in the, in, a, in the progress with a burglary or burglary or whatever it was, in uh, connected to those murders, it's a slam dunk. They're going to go right to the death penalty. Mm -hmm. Definitely, Susan. Uh, you know, hey, they've they've got the facts. If they can catch the person or persons who mm -hmm. did this, uh, my gosh, I, this uh, young pregnant woman. I mean, my my goodness, it, it's just it's disgusting. Uh, Sunny Slaughter, take us home here. Your thoughts on whether this should become a capital case. Oh, this is absolutely, I believe, a capital case. This is an execution style murder of uh, three individuals, one uh, under the age of 10, um, unborn. We don't know why this crime happened. Law enforcement is holding everything close to the vest, which I believe that they should do. I know the public always wants information, but I believe in the best interest of getting the investigation done, solved, and people arrested, that they need to hold as much information possible as close to the vest. And this is definitely a capital murder case. I'm with you all. Sonny Slaughter and Susan Constantine, thank you both so much. Wonderful to see you on our first show back in 2024. And looking forward to having you both on much more. And Carl Steinbeck's going to stay with us for our Tipping the Scales segment. We're going to be breaking down the very latest when we come back after this break in the allegations made by Paula Abdul. She's filed a lawsuit claiming she was sexually assaulted by that guy there, Nigel Lithgow. We're going to talk about it. And Adam Montgomery is set to go on trial very soon. He's accused of his daughter Harmony Montgomery's murder. And he wants certain pieces of evidence excluded from the trial. We're going to talk about how that might tip the scales of justice. Coming soon to Court TV. These murders have shaken our community. Why did you do it? The doomsday prophet, Chad Daybell. Prosecutors say they will seek the death penalty against him. A social media sensation, now a suspected killer. Karen Reed, she's accused of murder. She says she's the victim of a police cover-up. It's scary just knowing that he was so close. The high-stakes trials you don't want to miss. Coming soon, only on Court TV. Thanks for being with us this morning on Opening Statements. This morning, we're shining a spotlight on the very disturbing allegations recently made by Paula Abdul, as she's accusing a former American Idol producer of sexual assault. You were just thrown into the middle of cameras, and it was anything goes. My girl. Steven, Steven, Steven. That was terrible. Simon was loud and proud, telling everyone how they sucked. Tamika, Tamika. Tamika. Go, Tamika. Go, Tamika. 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 Go to an audition where they lie to you. Thank you very much. I could not believe what was coming out of Simon's mouth. Phone up your vocal coach and demand a refund. Oh, my God. Right. We were like family. And then we became America's favorite dysfunctional family. The singer and former Idol judge alleges that producer Nigel Lithgow sexually assaulted her on two occasions. Abdul claims in the first incident that Lithgow pushed her against a wall, grabbed her genitals, and shoved his tongue down her throat. And in the second instance, she claims that he forced himself on top of her while she was sitting on his couch and attempted to kiss her.
Now, Lithgow has denied any wrongdoing, saying that he is shocked and saddened by these allegations, saying, quote, while Paula's history of erratic behavior is well known, I can't pretend to understand exactly why she would file a lawsuit that she must know is untrue. But I can promise that I will fight this appalling smear with everything I have. End quote. So let's talk some more about these allegations and about the response. I want to bring in trial attorney Michelle Thomas to help us do that. Good morning, my friend. Nice to see you. I uh, have to start just with the allegations. So let's start there and then we'll get to his response. So uh, tell me your thoughts, Michelle. You do a lot of civil work. Uh, you know the system very well. What were your thoughts when you heard about this suit being filed? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's really concerning if what Paula Abdul is alleging is true, that he was groping her, touching her private parts and first in an elevator and then subsequently at his home. But at the same time, the question remains, why now? Why now is Paula Abdul raising these claims? And also, why would she even put herself in, in the second instance in his home in a private capacity if she had those concerns about him being sort of a sexual predator or anything like that? So I think there's a lot of questions here that arise from these allegations that are just coming out now. Um, but if true, then certainly it's disturbing because no one should have to tolerate or put up with that in a workplace. You're absolutely right, Michelle. Boy, you said some great things there, uh, unpacking some of what you said there. So in terms of the why, I had the same question. Why now? Why not then? Paula Abdul's a, a powerful woman, but we know it's not easy for women or for any victim, you know, woman or man, to, to speak out. It can be really, really tough. Um, and I, I read that she just filed this in the nick of time that the statute in California was about to expire, the statute of limitations, in order to uh, have justice for something that may have happened, you know, many, many years back. Uh, it, you know, that statute allowed this window for victims to go back in time. But she just, I read, just made the falling deadline by like a day. Uh, and so, so you wonder if she was struggling with this. That made me think, I wonder if, if she's been going back and forth in her mind. And I also read that she was afraid of retaliation. Um, that doesn't yeah. surprise you, does it, Michelle? It does not, especially the workplace retaliation component, because obviously there's going to be repercussions, though legally there's not supposed to be repercussions if someone files a complaint about a superior who's conducting themselves in an inappropriate manner. But we both know, Julie, that practically speaking, it does happen. She could have lost her job or she could have been what we people refer to as blacklisted in the industry or there being some other kind of monetary impact to her. The question still remains, though, between the time that she left the show and now, you know, why now. Um, it did strike me that she filed it just, I think, a few days before the deadline, um, the expiration of the statute of limitations. So I do think it was a tough decision for her. And it did make me think that she's been wrestling with this and going back and forth in her mind, but ultimately made the decision to preserve her right to pursue these these claims against him. Mm -hmm. Such great points. Uh, and then his statement, Michelle, you know, where he, the first thing out of uh, his mouth in the statement was he, he criticizes her behavior and he right away starts the character assassination, saying her erratic behavior in the past. Uh, what did you think of that? Was that kind of distasteful? Yeah, it, it would have been better for him to just sort of stay silent and just say, you know, we deny the allegations and we will, you know, look forward to defending ourselves. But the smear campaign, I mean, that's that goes to the crux and heart of why a lot of people and primarily women do not speak up because that they know that they though they are the victim in the situation, they are going to be attacked and people are going to question their character, their prior relationships and decisions. And it really does sort of blame the victim. And so we see that dynamic here. And that's probably one of the reasons that she did wait so long. And what she was weighing is how is it going to impact my public image, um, my own character and reputation versus her need to sort of make her story and voice heard. Right, Michelle. And Nigel Lithgow, this is a powerful guy in Hollywood, real powerful. Uh, let's bring in someone else with our conversation as we continue. I want to welcome in actor, writer, and media personality, Headcrack, joining us this morning from Atlanta. Headcrack, good to see you and Happy New Year. Same uh, to you. Yeah, oh, thank you. So let's talk a little bit about Nigel Lithgow. Um, you know how sometimes allegations can be really stunning and then sometimes somebody's reputation, once you, you hear about how they are, you're like, oh, okay, maybe not so stunning. What do we know about him, Headcrack? Uh, you know, 
I've never heard his name involved in too many scandals, if any at all, before. But, you know, I've been in this business long enough to get far enough down the road to, you know, nothing shocks me anymore. Like, you know, even what you saw with Bill Cosby, who at one point was America's dad. You know, so like if 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 he could stray away from the flock a little bit, anybody possibly can. And this is a narrative that you see so often in the business. You know what I mean? Women will keep their head down and have to endure so much harassment and so much unnecessary things just to try to get ahead in the workplace, not just in entertainment, but just in the workplace in general. So it's even worse in Hollywood because people will hold these things over your head and put you in a position where you feel like you don't have a voice. You have nobody advocating for you. So it's all possible. Right, head crack. You know, and he calls it a smear uh, campaign. He's calling it a smear, and he criticized Paul Abdul's behavior in the past, calling it erratic. Uh, what do you think about the way that he's coming out to refute this, rather than just saying, I did not do this? He's attacking her character. Uh, how do you I think mean, that's going to go for him? It's classic manipulated behavior. Um, you know, you 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 know discredit the accuser to create doubt in the hearts and minds of people, because, you know, Anybody who ever watched, you know, American Idol over a long period of time, you know, you always wondered what was really in those cans that she was drinking. However, you know, like that's something that they're preying upon. Maybe she used to come to work a little tipsy just to deal with the things that she had to deal with at work. We don't know. I wasn't there. Have no idea. But at the end of the day, when somebody says that something happens to them, you at least got to hear them out and then try to, like, you know, dig through the details and see where the truth lies and all that. Definitely. And I wonder how much we're going to see or if we're going to see a fast settlement. Uh, Michelle Thomas, your prediction. Settlement. I think that this is probably going to be settled as quickly as possible so that both parties can move forward without the ongoing smear campaign, particularly if there's any truth to Paula Abdul's allegations. I'm with you. Head crack, do you agree? Do you think we're going to see a quick settlement? I don't know, man. Like, you saw what just happened with Diddy. Diddy tried to make that situation go away. The next thing you know, it was like an amusement park line of people saying that Diddy did things to them. So I think when people look at how it works out when you pay people off and how it can bring more people out the woodworks with stories that are maybe true, maybe not true, you don't know. So it's going to be an interesting play because no case is the same. That's the truth. We got to see if the juice is worth the squeeze uh, to settle or not Ooh. settle. Head crack. Always great to have you on the program, Michelle Thomas. Same to you. Happy New Year to you Happy both. We'll look forward to having Thank you me. back very soon. And we're going to hit a break, friends. When we come back, we're going to shift gears and look ahead to the upcoming trial for Adam Montgomery. Will his request to exclude certain evidence tip the scales of justice? Don't go away. We are moving closer to trial in the case against doomsday prophet Chad Daybell. Prosecutors say they will seek the death penalty against him. Investigators have recovered human remains at Chad Daybell's residence. There's no way, Lori, and I should never come up with this. His wife, Lori Valla Daybell, has already been convicted. Now, will her husband end up with the same fate? It's just so hard to know where the truth ends. It's the doomsday prophet, Chad Daybell, on trial. Now to what's tipping the scales. Adam Montgomery has made some shocking requests just weeks before his murder trial for the death of his daughter, Harmony Montgomery. In motions filed, Adam's defense attorneys requesting this body cam footage of his encounter with New Hampshire police to not be shown to the jury. I'm under arrest. You don't want to be warranted. All right, I got nothing to say. Adam. Adam, right? Montgomery? Yeah. I don't, do you remember me from the Elliott Hospital from a while back, man? Yeah, I got, I got nothing to say. Right. So, hey, man, the only thing we're trying to figure out is yeah. where Harmony is, okay? Okay. So, the concern is that you guys are the same, right? Okay. You're not in trouble. Nobody said you're losing your daughter. Okay. Right? So, I want to make that clear. Okay. So, I'll let you know I have my body tomorrow, too, yeah. just like everybody else is being on your video report. So, you just need to find out where she is. That's all I'm concerned about. I mean, you're not in any trouble right now that I know of. Okay. You have no warrants. Okay. So, where's your daughter so we can check on her and make sure that she's okay? Right now, I have nothing to say to you guys. But that's not what I'm, I'm just asking okay. where she is. I, I have nothing to say. See, so you don't care how you, if your daughter's okay or not. I do. I, I listen, I have nothing to say. Is your daughter. If I'm under arrest, you guys can arrest me.
Wow, what an attitude he's got, huh? Well, Adam Montgomery's attorneys also want to exclude some suspicious purchases that his wife Kayla claims that he made to tamper with Harmony's remains, including a metal cutting blade, a grinder, and lime. Now, Kayla Montgomery is expected to be a key witness at Adam's upcoming trial scheduled to begin on February the 6th. She already testified at his trial last June where he was convicted on weapons charges. Here to discuss with me, Court TV crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson, Court TV legal correspondent Kelly Kraft, and we still have attorney Carl Steinbeck standing by remotely for us. What a panel I've got today <laughs> on the couch, you guys. Ooh, I wish we had all day to talk about this case. There's so much. Uh, Matt, let me start with you because right. you were there. You saw Kayla testify in the gun trial. You covered it for us. How did she come off as a witness? Right, so I was there for the weapons trial there in New Hampshire, and she came off very credible, even though, you know, she's serving time, and yeah. she was there in her prison outfit as well. But, uh, you know, I'm also looking over at that defense table and how Adam was carrying himself, very confident walking in the courtroom each and every day. You know, now a convicted felon, dirtbag, but with a great attorney, Carolyn Smith, that's really pushing for these motions. Ah, uh, right. You know, you're speaking of, and so we know that they want the items from Home Depot to not be in front of the jury. Uh, and Kelly, I want to bounce something off of you, please. Tap it into your experience as a former prosecutor. Um, taking a look at a piece of that affidavit of probable cause uh, that was for the, the murder charges, uh, Kayla offers some information about seeing Adam Montgomery pouring some lime on Little Harmony's body. So take a look. So we've, we've highlighted um, this and she says that Harmony uh, wasn't bones uh, that she had skin and teeth and hair this is so sad and she could still tell that it was her um, and then Adam put about half of the bag of lime or a little more um, into that bag that he was carrying around uh, that duffel bag that's mentioned all throughout the affidavit Kelly knowing this motion that his defense team has filed trying to keep out the lime and the other things the grinder um, what do you think as a prosecutor how problematic would it be if that stuff is excluded well as a prosecutor you want to argue that this is really connected to the case here and that's how you can get this kind of evidence in of course defense counsel is saying that lime is kind of a common product that maybe a lot of people will buy it so they want this ex excluded and of course they've actually had some wins so far in this case because the judge has agreed to suppress some of the interactions that he has made with the police but of course defense counsel wants that entire video that interrogation video and a little bit if you want to call it interrogation video that they showed earlier they want all of that excluded defense counsel but the prosecution really has to stick to the argument that this his actions are all connected to the death of his daughter mm -hmm. and then the judge can maybe decide to get it in. Mm -hmm. Right, Kelly. I'm glad you brought up about the video because he's also trying to keep that out. Uh, let's play another clip uh, from when he is questioned by police. Uh, can you make me a promise? Like, man to man? Can you tell me that she's alive? <laughs> You're going to play the same word games that you played with me the other no, day? No, it's not word games. I got nothing. That's what we care about. We want to know. This, this isn't gonna. This right. isn't gonna go anywhere. Like this isn't gonna stop. So no, I know it's not. So, no, no, so either right. get on the bus now or get run over. Well, I got nothing else to say. Why is it you have so much trouble talking about harmony? Cause I just got. I got nothing else to say. I want a lawyer with me. Lawyers up there, Carl Steinbeck. Uh, tell me what you think about the likelihood that that video potentially being excluded. What do you think the judge will do, please? Yeah, I think the judge is probably going to exclude most all the evidence of what he says. And uh, what they're looking at as a prosecutor is if that happens, then what other evidence can we bring in to show his guilt? And a lot of that would be his body language, his demeanor. And so take out the words, what do you have about the way he's acting, just the way he's uh, uh, responding outside of his car and whatnot. And think about it, what, what kind of father wouldn't be concerned about his daughter who's missing for two years and he's got nothing to say about it. So he's obviously very uh, acting very guilty and suspicious. And that's what the fence is trying to do is keep everything they possibly can out. And even the stuff like the line purchase, that kind of stuff should come in though, because that does show 
that it's directly tied to the crime. And so I expect all that kind of evidence of what he purchased at Home Depot will be admissible. Mm -hmm. All right, Carl, I I'm with you there. Uh, I know Kelly's nodding too. I think we can all agree this really should. I'd be stunned if the judge excludes that. Maybe that bit of video there, maybe, you know, I, I don't know because it's, you know, I don't know what he's offering. He lawyers up, you know, immediately. And to your point, Carl, he just sits there and looks guilty. So it is prejudicial in a way. And if I'm a prosecutor, I probably wouldn't care so much if that's excluded. I don't think it really makes the case. Uh, I want to show you all something else from the affidavit. Let's take a look at some of what is noted by police in the way in which uh, they say this crime was covered up. Uh, in the affidavit, and we've highlighted the portion of it, if we could put it on the screen, it says that Adam had placed Harmony's body in a duffel bag and kept it in the trunk of the car. For months, they took Harmony's remains with them as they bounced around living in different places. While living at a shelter, Adam placed the bag with Harmony's remains in the ceiling vent in their bedroom. And when the duffel bag began leaking, Adam placed a trash bag around it, only removing the bag from the ceiling when a neighbor complained about the smell. And at one point, uh, he apparently moved her remains uh, to a smaller bag in order to fit her inside it. Yeah. He replaced the remains in, or he placed them rather inside a bathtub. And that's where we highlighted that portion a couple moments ago where Kayla says she saw the lime being poured. Uh, the story that is told here, Matt Johnson, I, it, like as I'm reading it, I mean, I'm cringing. I know you are too. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about the family and, and the fact that this girl wasn't even given a chance at life. Her body has never been found. And then also the cast of characters that we're gonna see back on the stand making the case that this dirtbag is guilty of the murder because they have their own set of problems and troubles that prosecutors have to overcome with yeah. drug addiction. They definitely right. do. And of course, she's going to be, Kayla is going to be a key witness in the this wife. trial. Yeah. The wife, the estranged right. wife. Right. And of course, defense counsel wants to muddy the waters on her and talk about her prior convictions. And of course, their goal is to get the jury not to believe a word she says. <laughs> right, Kelly. They need Kayla. If Kayla goes south, uh, this is really going to be problematic because she saw everything and she's one of those people that as a prosecutor you know you just have to kind of bite your tongue and you know and and play the hand you're dealt so to speak look I, I mean she's she's a criminal look she engaged in this she pleaded she's cooperating I um, and so look it's like all right let's you know hold her accountable to a degree but realize you know she didn't do the the big crime the, this was dad according to police and prosecutors uh carl steinbeck uh tell me how strong do you think the case is for prosecutors against adam montgomery i think they're going to be able to prove that he's the one behind it and i think that uh the way he was moving the body around and whatnot that is just so absolutely gruesome and uh, so I, I think that's going to really bring in a lot of strong indicators right there just because of what he was doing with the body and how he's moving around. And the way people were complaining about the odors and whatnot, that didn't seem to affect him, that others had to bring up uh, the disgusting nastiness about things like that. So I, I do think that from what I've seen that uh, the evidence will be there to convict him. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it, it seems like the evidence is there. Oh, my gosh. Um, and with the, the gun case, uh, Matt, I remember him mm -hmm. standing up and saying, you know, I didn't kill my daughter and all that. Oh, what was yeah. that about? He was like, well, I accept the, the jury's decision. I'm not going to really talk about that. But I didn't do this. I didn't kill my daughter. And, and I'm innocent on all, all of those allegations. And everyone just kind of looked at each other when yeah. he said that. It was, it was kind of weird. Right. Kelly, do you think there's any way we're going to see him testify? I would say no, Julie. I just I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, of course yeah. we all right. <laughs> would love to see him to him testify, but clearly drugs were involved and he had some sort of issues that were going on to do something like this. Of course, he's presumed innocent until proven guilty, but just the craziness, the gruesomeness of this case is just is just terrible. I would say do not take the stand. Right. Hopefully he listens to the good advice of his counsel and doesn't testify. Mm, but they're good. a guy like this, yeah, yeah, I remember you were very impressed. So so this will be interesting to see what, what happens uh, in this case. February 6th is the start date for the trial. Big thanks to Kelly Kraft and Matt Johnson and attorney Carl Steinbeck uh, for being on the show today. Thank you all.